Please be seated. Invite the choir if they want to uh, go to the front again. I can honestly say today, uh, Reverend Curran, we do have an audience at home uh, from British Columbia. I know there are people in British Columbia watching today, as well as in Nova Scotia and everywhere in between. So I want to welcome them to Grace today uh, to this uh, celebration. Michigan, too. There's someone in Michigan. Okay, great. We as uh, humans um, have a difficulty, and I don't know if I'm speaking for all of us, but we have a difficulty in um, letting go of things. Um, junk, things we gather, clothes, material goods. Um, and it's interesting, if you look at the transgression of where our things go, they go from maybe being in the living room, in our bedrooms. Then they get moved to a junk room or a closet. Sometimes the basement. Then they end up in the garage. Then some of them don't make it to the cottage. They get to the end of the driveway in the recycle bins or in the garbage. But there is so much that we gather in this life that at the end of one's life, there are people that are left to get rid of the things. Amen? I notice that now with my dear wife, Rita, and her mother, who's suffering from dementia, clearing out the house, getting it ready for one day when she has to leave. We get attached to things. And of course, you all know that probably the most serious of attachment is those who suffer from the mental challenges of hoarding. Why are we so attached to things? Well, there's always an emotional attachment. For me, I, I save the first guitar that I wrote my first song on. We save pictures. We save clothing that doesn't fit us anymore, but we wore it one day to a special event. There's memories attached to the things we own. Or, as my parents always used to say, don't throw that out, we may need it someday. In the gospel today, Jesus, and we sang it, says to his disciples, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single grain. So what does collecting stuff and holding on to things have to do with the gospel? Well, Jesus prepares his disciples by comparing his passion, his death, his resurrection to a seed that dies but bears fruit. Jesus' life will not change. His life will change, pardon me, and not end. And his disciples will become his seeds that grow and do his work. We too are invited to become seeds of new life. You've heard the expression, I know you have, maybe I'm showing my age, when someone will say, he's a bad seed. Stay clear of him. People who are known to sow hate, dishonesty, envy, spite, revenge, selfishness, or maybe people have been victims of those seeds. Maybe bad seeds have fallen into our lives and choke the joy we are meant to experience. We know that. We notice even when we hang around people who are still living with the poison of regret and disappointment, they're angry and they want to share their conflict with us. That's why it's very difficult to hang around people who are always angry always looking for a fight. The seeds that need to fall to the ground and die are the seeds that do not bear fruit. 
Falling to the ground in our life means what do we need to let go of? The things are easy to let go of at times. Glad to see that piece of furniture gone. Glad to see that gone. But some of us are good at holding on to regrets, disappointments, fear, guilt. My mother had that famous line, always. On a day like today, I'd be going out with a few of the boys to enjoy a little uh, Irish cheer. My mother would always say to us as we're going out the door, it's your soul. (laughs) Holy Week should really remind us that the greatest love story ever told began at a cross, but ended with an empty tomb. The end result of the Easter story is an empty tomb. We hold our salvation on an empty tomb. That empty tomb should remind us that we need to empty our lives of those that take away the life and the joy that we are called to have. Like Jesus, in the passion story we'll hear, trusted in God. He let go and put himself in the hands of his father. I believe the secret to life as Christians, as brothers and sisters in this church and every other church in the world is to let go and let God. To let go, to trust that God has a way for us even when we don't see a way. The reality is there's not one person in this church does not bear wounds. We all have wounds. We all have those seeds. And if we don't deal with them, they tend to bleed on others. And we treat others wounded. Our our woundedness and our seeds need to fall to the ground and die. And how does it begin to die? What do we need to let go? Is the word forgiveness. Lord, how often must I forgive? Seven times? No, Jesus says, seven times, 70 times. In other words, to forgive continuously. I can't forgive that person. You know what they did to me? I lost my job because of him. Do you know what that neighbor did to me? You know what my father did to me? You know what my brothers did to me? We have it all wrong. Forgiveness is for our sake, not theirs. Forgive so that you can be free. So you can be free of the things that are holding you down from being a resurrected people. Letting go and leaving to God is the message of the gospel today. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single grain. Letting go means letting go of people who hurt us in our history and are not part of our destiny. We love to hold on. Our past is merely a reference, not a residence. But we hold on believing there's only a past. When we let go, when we forgive, is knowing there is a future. We need to learn how to let go of yesterday because yesterday has already let go of you. Let me say that again. Let it resonate in your hearts. Let the Holy Spirit stir up this in your hearts today. You need to let go of yesterday with all its hurts, with all its baggage, with all its bad seeds because yesterday has already let go of you. Like my mother used to say, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift, that's why we call it the present. We enter now into the week of this passion in a week now, and we will see how Jesus lets go, his letting go. How do we enter into his passion? How do we follow his example? What do we need to let go in our lives 
What is clinging to our lives that make us live so isolated, so self-enclosed, so fearful? We remain a single grain. Who do we need to let go of? Who do we need to let go of? Who is holding us back from being a resurrected people? Being filled with His joy? What experience? What regret? I didn't get that job. I didn't get my God marks. I didn't. We could spend our whole life on thinking of the things we could have or should have, but we will remain a single grain. When we let go, we give room for God to work in our lives. Because in letting go, we find the answer is Jesus. We find the answer is Jesus. Whoever serves me follows me. We need to serve the Lord by serving Him, by following the example of letting go and being fully alive. By giving our hearts to the heart of God. I've often said that Jesus would never be a member of the Green Party today because He's not good at recycling. Jesus doesn't recycle. He gives us a new heart He gives us a new spirit. He gives us a new life. He doesn't recycle our hearts. He gives us a new one. And so, my friends, I invite all of us as we quickly enter into that Holy Week next weekend with Palm Sunday, let us be mindful that that whole love story is about Jesus letting go and letting God. And allowing the seed to die and become new life. Let us give room for God to work in our lives. Let us not hold on to those things that do not allow us to experience the brightness and the glory of the empty tomb. In life, there are good things that we have to let go of. The first image I have of letting go is when parents teach their children to ride and they finally let them go. Ride their bicycle on their own. And we have to watch them fall. We watch them get hurt. Yet we let go. We see our children off to school. Off to university. Starting new families. There are other things that in life that are not just material things that we have to let go of. Loving relationships. In separation and divorce, we go separate ways. We let go of those things that break us apart. The ultimate letting go is death. It's at death we let our loved ones go. Not their memory. Not their values. Not their wisdom. We will let them physically go. As the little girl from Kansas said, there's no place like home. And we let them go home. My brothers and sisters, our whole life is about letting go. In honor of St. Patrick's Day today, my heritage and many of your heritage. I'd like to uh, conclude with a a song that has been interpreted in many ways as letting go. The song has been interpreted to mean a mother and father saying goodbye to a son or daughter off to war. The song has been interpreted as a girl or a woman, a man saying goodbye to a loved one. The song has been interpreted over the past hundred or more years as people leaving their home and their homeland. So in the spirit of letting go and in the spirit of letting go so that God can be born in us, Jesus can be born in us, let me just uh, sing a little bit of my heritage 
on this St. Patrick's Day. Old Sandy boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. The summer's gone and all the roses falling. It's you, it's you must go and I must buy. But come ye back when summer's in the meadow Or when the valley's hushed and white with snow It's I'll be here in sunshine in her shadow Old Sandy boy, old Sandy boy, I love you so But when ye come and all the flowers are dying If I am dead, as dead as I may be You'll come and find the place where I am lying And kneel and say, and are they there for me? And I shall hear those soft you tread above me And all my gray will warmer, sweeter be For you will bend and tell me that you love me And I shall sleep in peace until you come to May your troubles be less and your blessings be more and nothing but happiness pass through your door. May Jesus Christ be praised. Amen.